Good evening. This is Street Talk, and I'm Father Russ Carmichael. And I uh, thank you again, all you viewers, to let me into your home. Tonight I got a great show, uh, okay? I, I do want to uh, do wanna say before we get started, as we always do, our prayers are going out to Senator Andy Maynard. Uh, all you folks know we care about him. Uh, we worry about Andy, and we hope that he's doing better. Uh, okay, uh, we've heard that he is doing uh, a little better, and uh, so as, as always, all our viewers here, you know, we're, we're all Andy fans, so, you know, keep your prayers going up for Andy. Um, and uh, Ray, I know you're going to be out there and you're going to call me in a minute, so just hang on, okay, while I introduce my guests, and uh, I'll, I'll get to you when you call. I have a great guest, one you can see sitting right, me, right beside me is Representative James Maroney, I, okay, he's from uh, Milford. Uh, he represents the Milford Orange uh, area, and uh, we're going to talk about how we met James. Okay, he's uh, running for office again, second time, right? Just, uh, okay, and uh, we met uh, James through uh, doing the work with uh, ABI. Across from me, I have Representative Paul Davis, uh, okay, he, he's over there, and uh, He's uh, from the Milford Orange West Haven uh, area too, and uh, uh, this is the first time I met Paul right. tonight. And uh, across from me, my favorite, our co-host is right there. Dominic Cotton is again with us. Okay, causing trouble as always. So uh, it's my job. <laughs> that's, his, that's, that's, his, that's his job. Okay, so we're, 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 we'll we'll get. Uh, We'll get right into it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Dominic for a minute, okay? Because you actually introduced me to both James and 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 uh, 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 this Paul. This is this 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 is half of what I call Team Milford over here. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm from Milford. The other half we're we're hoping to get on at at a, at a later date. Um, but um, the fact that you guys like work so cooperatively together, um, you know, like my other friends down in Norwalk, I call Team Norwalk. Uh, to get things done um, in, in the legislature for, uh, for, for our community is really important. Um, but James, James is actually a, a, a friend of my wife's. Uh, he, w he went to, to Jonathan Law with her. And um, we actually uh, asked James to come out and help us out um, when we were initially trying to reach out to uh, different legislators to talk about the, uh, the ABI issue that we had. And he, he came over to my house. He met with me and, and one of my clients, Rich. and. Um, has been uh, a support uh, to us throughout the whole process. Uh, he, he came to uh, the State House with us uh, a couple of times. Um, certainly we met, met in the corridors uh, in between meetings and uh, introduced us around to different people. And um, even though you weren't on the Human Services or Appropriations Committees that we were dealing with, uh, you know, you've been a terrific support and, and a friend to us all the way around. Paul, I, I actually met at a fundraiser. Uh, we, we started discussing, you know, what we were dealing with, with the brain injury issue. And I know, you, you know, you, you jumped right in there with us. And certainly I know you're in leadership. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure the topic uh, of what we were trying to accomplish certainly uh, came up within that. And, you know, I can't thank you guys enough for, for what you do, not only for our disability community, but... Uh, for our community in Milford. Thank you, Dominic, and, and thank you, Father Russ, for what, what you've done to help educate us. Um, and that's very important as legislators. Connecticut is, you know, is a, a citizen's legislature, and we all have different areas of expertise, but you can't know everything. And so we rely on citizens like the two of you to come and educate us. And thanks for having us here tonight. I'd also like to thank you for the opportunity to Get to the community. I, I think it's important that people hear from legislators, hear from people who have particular interests and uh, ideas and thoughts. And uh, it's uh, something that is important for everyone, particularly as we have an election coming up. People need to know what's going on and need to see what's out there. And I, I like the fact that, uh, and, and, and we, can, we can thank Brandon Sharkley over there, they put you guys uh, and, and utilize your skills in, in, in the most appropriate places. Uh, I mean, James, I know you run like your own SAT. Uh, uh, an educational uh, prep for, and you're on the higher education committee. Paul, 
I don't know what you taught, but you were you you taught for like what forty years here? Well, wait a second. I, I I already retired twelve years ago, so uh, okay. okay. So uh, I'm up there, uh, but uh, yeah, I serve on the education committee, and uh, you know it's. Uh, something that I enjoy doing and I think I have the experience. Uh, and, the and, I, and I think it's, you know, a lot of people, they think of the legislature and they think it's just, it's all lawyers up there and it's not. It's, it's, it's a lot of people that come from a, a diverse background and I think it's, it's all those talents that, that, that are brought into that that really help, you know, uh, make this a good place for our citizens to understand the, what's the going on. The diversity is key. Yeah. The diversity and yeah. all this stuff, and it's really interesting education. Like, well, we got a, New <laughs> London's hot with the educational topic right now. Right. Uh, okay, okay, as education, uh, our interests, all our interests here are about education mm -hmm. and the kids and uh, what what we're going to do uh, with them. And uh, I guess I'll go to you, Paul. How, how do you see? What do you see our state going? Educational wise, I understand, and it's my belief that they that uh, statewide and our party would like to do away with boards of education and, uh, and get into, uh, what do we call that, the core? Uh, well, I think, core, I, you core, know what? Core, None core of us understand core. the common core. The common what is the common <laughs> core to be in with? So here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the interesting yeah. thing about it, uh, uh, every problem with education uh, can be blamed in a on a certain thing. So people are having issues with education now. Has, uh, it's a common core's fault. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, when, when there were uh, and there are some uh, issues uh, of learning, it's a teacher's fault. Uh, wh what we're talking about, first of all, with Common Core, mm -hmm. uh, Common Core is a set of standards. It's, it's supposed to be a challenging set of standards. It was developed uh, by uh, groups of educators, uh, experts, uh, supposed experts, I should say. Uh, it's uh, not a federal mandate. There's no federal government involved in this. It's uh, state-wide. Uh, it was actually uh, the governor's conference of governors who decided that uh, they'd like to develop a curriculum that would be accepted nationwide to try and even the standards uh, around the uh, country. Uh, most of the governors, no party uh, involvement as far as this should be a Republican or this should be a Democratic concept. It was uh, totally bipartisan. To totally bipartisan. Yeah, right. And uh, uh, almost every state subscribed to it. And then once we started implementing it and the governors and the boards of education and, and the departments of education started hearing conflicts, I said, oh, wait a second. Uh, I like this, but I don't like that part of it. And uh, now we're uh, dealing with this in Connecticut, and we have many people coming back to us and say, the Common Core is terrible, and 90% of the people don't understand what it is. What and it that, is. that's one of the things that we're talking about right now is it, it, we're talking about standards. And uh, I, I can't find a person out there who does not think that we should have quality high standards for our students. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a matter of how we get there. Yeah, and of course, as, as, as we know, <coughs> most people, a lot of people in education, as we go around the country, mm -hmm. depending on what part of the country you, uh, you, you're brought up in, the level of education, the standard is not equal. Right. And, right. and that, again, is, is a major problem. And I, a lot of people don't understand that in our particular area, New England-wide, our educational standard is extremely high, say, versus someplace like Kentucky or, uh, or Mississippi or, uh, or uh, other, other, and I'm not pointing those out directly, but it happens to be factual that, uh, that that's, that is one of the problems, I right. view. Well, you know, <clears throat> some of these states have claimed tremendous uh, improvements in educational standards, and, and they're to be congratulated for that. Right. But when you're starting at a very low point, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to improve your education than when you're starting well, where you know, Connecticut we're, started. We're exactly right. Uh, you know, James works with uh, students going to college, and uh, he knows the type of quality students we have here in Connecticut. And some of the recent tests have indicated Connecticut students are among the best in the country. And I've always believed that as a teacher. I, uh, I taught in West Haven, which uh, was a school very similar to the schools here in the London area. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, there, there are challenges, but certainly our students really 
uh, are rising up to those challenges now, and we have to work hard and make sure that they get there. And you gave me a nice segue right over to uh, James there with the SATs. I mean, yeah, I mean, you do testing, right? I mean, yeah, that's your business. Right, I work with students to prepare them to take uh, standardized tests, whether it's the SAT or the ACT. I went to Newton School System. I flunked them. <laughs> Uh, they, they told me my, most of my school went to Harvard, and <laughs> I wasn't allowed in. So I, <laughs> I think that was one of the problems, those, uh, those tests that you give out, right? But, but no, I, I, aside from be fooling around, how do you view that? Uh, well, one of the things is you know, the, the fact that people can go to a company and, and, and go for extra tutoring and improve their score means that it's not a fair test. Right, and, and we know that the, the, the tests aren't necessarily fair, the, the standardized tests to get into college. They are changing the, the SAT again um, in 2016. Um, but one of the things I think that the big objection with Common Core, bringing it back to the Common Core, is that people are confusing the testing. Testing is not Common Core. It's supposed to be a way of measuring how measure. you're progressing right. through the Common Core. But uh, there are two tests. You know, we, we're doing the Smarter Balanced, and right. then I can't remember the name. The other test is actually used by more states. But the <laughs> fact that not enough people really know what Common Core is, that's our, our fault uh, as a state. And in other states, you mentioned Kentucky. Kentucky was one of the early adopters of the Common Core. And they did a tremendous job in bringing information out to the citizens. And it was a partnership of the uh, State Department of Education, a nonprofit that was created for that purpose of informing the citizens about Common Core, and the State Chamber of Commerce. And they did roadshows. They went around explaining to everyone what it meant, you know, why the Common Core was necessary. What's it mean to you <clears throat> and that we should know? Well, I think it's important to know that a lot of the employers were saying, we're getting kids out of high school that don't have the skills that they need. And so the Common Core is a way of saying, this is what you need to know. It, it's not a national curriculum, as Paul pointed out. It's more of a, it's not even necessarily a roadmap. It's destinations. You need to get here. You get here however you want. <clears throat> so am I saying, like an old timer, I need to know where my reading, writing, arithmetic is? Is, is, is that what we're really talking yeah. about here? Well, uh, abs absolutely, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a road map, there, there's no yeah. question about it, but the interesting thing is uh, Common Core is designed to establish higher standards, but they're not so high as the average person shouldn't have the skills that are expected from the Common Core. In other words, I'm supposed to be able to make change. Yeah. Okay. Right. Instead of okay, and so I should be able, instead of to using a picture on on on, on a machine mm -hmm. uh, to figure out what I'm doing, I should be able to do this right. in my head. Well, <laughs> well, that's a little bit different. <laughs> 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 oh, they, they they actually I think make you show your work about uh, how you get to that point. Okay. Uh, yeah. well, so some of the things I've seen with the Common Core are uh, the fact that uh, people should have different uh, ways of approaching a problem and solving a problem. When uh, an employer hires somebody, they want to train that person for the job, but they want the person to be able to be trained. And for that, you need those types of skills. And that, that's what uh, the, the focus of our education is moving toward. Can we develop a uh, student who comes out of school with the knowledge and ability to be able to adapt to new mm -hmm. situations and learn new skills because they have the quality basics there. Okay, so now we're getting back into brain injury and, 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 and how the brain works because you're talking about logic and the cognizant ability mm -hmm. to understand those things. Uh, my, uh, <laughs> I'm fortunate that one of my youngest daughter is a lieutenant in the Coast Guard, graduate of the Coast Guard Academy. Her mother's top 2% of the country, mathematics, science, uh, was a superintendent of schools, uh, okay? I remember when Angie came home with a calculator from school, middle school, mm -hmm. and she's got this calculator doing, right? And she could whiz out these formulas and everything on this calculator, right? Mommy took the calculator, took it away, and said, write it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Write it down and show me how you did that. Right. And of course, that kind of, uh, she couldn't use the calculator until she understood how to do the thing. And of course, she again is one of those 
like her mother, not like her father. <laughs> <laughs> One of those people off the charts in math and science and stuff like that. But I mean, I, I just remember that, uh, you, you know, show me how you do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I don't care how you get there, but show me. Well, I know, I, know. I used to, I used to keep five million dollar budgets like in my head for. Uh, I used to run Goodwill Industries, uh, right. all their programs, and I could keep the budgets in my head, and I could tell you month to month where which money went where, how, and. But if I went up to their CFO, and I tried to explain to him like why like my numbers were different like one month over the other, and I said it's the system that you're using, and I explained to him. You know, this is a CFO. He'd just like scratch his head. He'd be like, "How did you get, a, get come up with this? Or how could you predict that this is what was going on with this?" And I think it's those those this logic is what, but skills. These, these are the that skills need. that we're talking about that somehow people missed. They want a deeper understanding, and, right. and they, a deeper understanding of math. And employers want problem solving. And you know, we talk about like if you're going to be a CNC machinist, um, you know, you need to be able to if things don't go right. You know to understand, you to and you'll be able to see a picture and understand: is this what the piece should be? Right. And and there, are, and that CNC machinists, you know, that's we can't hire enough in, in the state, and there aren't enough skilled people. Now, yeah, but but then again, are we talk. See, the problem when I get into with this stuff, how we talk, and certain people have the certain ability to look at things and mm -hmm. and forms and uh, problem solving, and then other people do not necessarily have that uh, mental ability or capability to do that. Uh, are, are we missing something in all this? I guess that becomes my, my question, uh, okay? I think you're right. We all have different intelligences, yeah. right? And, and we need to have different paths. And I think there's a big push in the college and career ready is a big buzzword you'll hear that every student should be college and career ready. My personal opinion is that students should have the ability to go to college. It does not necessarily mean that they should go to college. Okay. Um, they should have the options to go into the trades. You know, one of the things Paul and I have talked a lot about and we worked on is apprenticeships. You know, and that's something uh, that's big, yeah. big overseas right. and, and not as big. It used to be one of the major things our union people had here years ago. You could apprentice and stuff like that now. Right. Yeah. Well, I know. I think that brings it back to you. You, uh, you were actually you're involved with Plat Tech, and I believe you've been involved with it for many years. Right. Yeah. I guess what level of preparation does that give for somebody who's looking to get into like uh, the trades or other things? You know, our, our, our tech schools are doing an outstanding job, uh, and some of them, unfortunately, don't have the equipment that others do. And uh, one one of the things that yeah, we have done with our uh, tech school system is is totally remake it. Uh, we're working on uh, um, uh, equalization of the, the uh, opportunities for students at the different schools. Uh, some of the schools were far advanced over other schools. The budgets were not handled properly. You know, you were talking about understanding where the money's going. Well, mm -hmm. when we started looking at what was going on with the tech schools, uh, well, if you had an aggressive principal, you'd get more money. Uh, if you had um, somebody up at the State Department of Education that uh, was looking at one particular school and said, oh, that school needs this, sometimes that happened, other times it didn't. So there, there was really no quality control there. Okay. And now, now, now we're doing a much, much better job. Uh, these students are being trained on equipment that you actually find in manufacturing, particularly some of the high-tech areas. And they're coming out with skills. Is this what we're talking about? Are these this magnet schools that we're talking about? I mean, New London's supposed to be a, going to be a center for magnet schools. Is that what we're talking about, or is that different? Than it's tech, different than the regional schools. vocational yeah, because, technical yeah, schools. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's right. what I thought, the, too. The techni know? technical schools are actually a school system, one school system statewide, mm -hmm. okay. and it acts as a single school system with a focus on uh, developing those skills Okay, so if I was that. going into manufacturing, say, and right. uh, the place that I'd be looking for is the tech school that would have, say, the new MIT um, uh, systematic uh, 
uh, machines, the high tech things that make everything out of plastic. You know what I'm talking. You know, about. you know, it's a 3D printer. Right. 3D printer, right. yes. so I can make my own. You know, you know it's, it's it's funny <laughs> when we talk about manufacturing. People like, still have the image of the of the, the old yeah. shop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come out with grease, grease all over your hands. Over your saw right. Right. <laughs> and all people yeah. in Connecticut. And I, this is probably the focus uh, of our developing economy and improving economy is high tech manufacturing, where the the people involved in manufacturing have the skills that are necessary to operate machines that maybe before didn't even exist. Didn't exist. Robotics. Right. right. Uh, I right. mean, when you're talking we, about... We, we always talk about, like, how, uh, with, 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 with uh, the smaller manufacturers. That's what we, we, right. I think, like, you know, you go to places like China, they want to make, you know, a billion of one thing right. that's simple. And I think that's where a lot of manufacturing has come back to this country mm -hmm. because there's specialized... Um, you know, uh, equipment pieces, you know, things that you're, you're, you're making um, that, you know, are like sometimes one-off like type things that you, you, you're not making a billion of them. You might be making, you know, a thousand of this product and maybe a thousand of this product, but they're very highly specialized. And I, and I think mm -hmm. this is where we need to be focusing people towards understanding. As a, as a country, our advantage has always yeah. been to innovate. We've always created the things and innovated, oh, yeah. and then other countries have copied yeah. it and maybe yeah. done it cheaper, but mm -hmm. the innovation, uh, the intellectual capital really comes from here. And you're right, you're seeing that. The high-tech, high high-skill manufacturing is, is coming back. Um, when you talk about Plat Tech, Plat Tech has an advanced manufacturing center. I believe Dave Tuttle is the name of the man who runs that, but they all graduate with jobs. They, pretty much everyone oh, yeah, from the, yeah, well, yeah, the advanced they, manufacturing at Platt Tech are going to get someplace, right? But then again, that's what we talk. It goes back to before you can get there, you've got to have the education. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, right. you have to have the ability to be able to uh, operate the type of equipment right. we're we're talking about and stuff like that. So then we get back to the lower education kids in school. How you get them to the point where they're going to be able to deal in that and, and, and I, I don't think that really our population understand the total face of changing our, our, our whole base of manufacturing. I don't think they I don't think they're, I, they got I agree it. with they you have, as yeah, I said they still they, have that they, image. They right have, yeah they've got a different image of where we're going right. or where we have to go. You know uh, James and I uh, and Milford we're, we're, we're lucky I think because we have a, a lot of businesses and quite a bit of uh, uh, manufacturing, advanced manufacturing and high-tech manufacturing. Done some tours of uh, some of these uh, manufacturing plants, worked with uh, the companies, and, and many of them are, are, are owned by a family or an individual. Uh, we, we've seen the things that they do, and uh, they're, they're amazing. They have uh, parts, some of them have contracts. We just talked about uh, contracts for uh, United Technologies, UTC. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of our people in Milford are manufacturing parts that go over to Sikorsky, which is just yes. over in Stratford, and mm -hmm. uh, the jobs that are created because of this and the relationships that develop between some of the larger companies and some of these smaller high-tech manufacturers are very important in our economy and uh, in uh, helping uh, uh, to generate more new jobs, good-paying jobs in Connecticut. Well, yeah, that's exactly. why I think that whole... Uh, UTC, you know, and allowing to be able to get their their, their tax seventy-seven credits. companies in Milford yeah. and Orange are in the UTC I mean, I supply chain. Nine hundred and sixty-five yeah. people are employed directly by UTC. That's two thousand jobs, if you look at it that way, mm -hmm. that stay in Milford and Orange. And you talk about the high-tech manufacturing. One of the coolest things is when I went to the Smithsonian over the summer. They're showing all the different space helmets. One of them was manufactured by Airlock in Milford, Connecticut. So it's Airlock, Milford, Connecticut, right there in the Smithsonian. So um, it, you know, we have a lot to be proud of in the manufacturing that's going on. It's on you. Am I up next? I jumped in, sorry. <laughs> I threw off no, the no, no, chemistry. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. I, I, I'm allowed to have the quiet moments. <laughs> <laughs> I like to put the heat yeah, right on. You know what I mean? Does, well, we got a little well, I, I know that we were yeah. talking about this. I know yeah. uh, you introduced yeah, exactly. a, a bill 
um, to, to, to help with the, that whole process of, 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 of with the education of uh, yeah. One of the things, right, Paul and I together, um, we worked and we were held, able to put together a working group down in Bridgeport uh, that brings together Department of Labor, Workforce Investment Board, uh, nonprofits focused on workforce development, as well as Votex, community colleges, private industry, and they meet monthly. Um, and Chris Caruso has been running that from the Department of Labor, doing a fantastic job with uh, VSNO working with them as well on that. Um, but out of that, and, and what we had learned was what they're doing at this Nuntuck Community College, their advanced manufacturing center up in the northern part of the state. And they have a program where they're actually starting with middle school students on the 3D printing, as you mentioned. The additive manufacturing is supposed to be another big thing for the state. Um, and they're introducing them and the parents to manufacturing. And after their sophomore year in high school, they can choose to start going to as Nuntuck to the uh, advanced manufacturing program. And then after they graduate high school, it's only one more year to get an associate's degree instead of two years to get an associate's degree uh, in advanced manufacturing. And so um, we were able to, to sponsor a bill and write a bill to ask to look to expand that type of a mm -hmm. program statewide, looking at why can't the kids who are going to, um, you know, to Jonathan Law or Amity or mm -hmm. Foreign, you know, it, they may not know right away that they want to go into the manufacturing. So looking at using the Votech schools, 13 of our Votech schools have manufacturing centers. And if you're a business, a small business, and you invested in this expensive equipment, you're going to run it 24 hours oh, yeah. a day. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, you're going right. to. And, and yeah. this is what we've talked about. James, by the way, has been a great addition to the legislature. Uh, um, uh, some of his uh, thoughts and ideas. I, I'm pretty good with ideas, but he. he he somehow has the head to work them out uh, a <laughs> little bit better. It's but like Yale uh, education. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we make a great team, yes. you know. Yeah, it's, 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 well. been, it's been enjoyable uh, working with him and, uh, you know, presenting the concept. He said, so many of our factories run 24 hours. Exactly. Why shouldn't we be using our schools? Exactly. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, people who uh, want to change careers, middle-aged people, mm -hmm. and now we have the facilities, let's use them, give them an opportunity to work when the school is not in session. And uh, we talked about doing that, and uh, Housatonic Community College also is, is working on a program for people looking to change careers as they get older, and uh, we need to focus on that. We're also looking at uh, programs for veterans uh, uh, who may have developed some skills in the service mm -hmm. coming out and giving them their further training. A lot of our local manufacturers said, We'd love to hire veterans, and uh, you know, with the training that they've had, the experiences that they've had, a little bit of additional stuff that uh, we can present to them, that would really be helpful in our uh, manufacturing and also in getting them jobs. And if they're willing to hire veterans, there are a lot of different benefits right. to them. If, if a veteran is, still has GI, you know, GI Bill money, they, they, money, they can get the, their rent through BAH, Basin Housing. Um, if they're doing an apprenticeship, um, there's actually an on-the-job training portion. The employer can get reimbursed. The state, this past session, we were able to extend the manufacturing apprenticeship tax credit to apply to uh, not only to the C-Corps like it had before, but most businesses are set up as either an S-Corp or an LLC. And so we're able to extend that apprenticeship credit. So between that, there was a federal on-the-job training tax credit, which I believe is on hold now, but you can apply for it. But if and it's ever funded again, they can well, get that. kind of like fit in with, uh, I, I know there, there was the whole uh, discussion with like the MORE program, which had to do with regionalization. I know we were talking in the car right up there. There's, a, I guess, 166 different superintendents uh, of school schools. districts. Oh, and, so and, 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 and maybe regionalizing some of that might help with um, really bringing up some school programs um, and, and, and being able to, uh, you know, put the money into smart places. And one of the things with regionalization, I think, it, and we discussed this on the way up to it's part of our culture, is that um, we're very hyper-local, okay. you know, and very much over the local right. control. People from, you know, if they're from Huntington, which is a neighborhood in Shelton, they're from Huntington. They're not from Shelton. In Milford, you may even say the neighborhood within Milford. I'm from Woodmont, Laurel Beach, Devon, mm -hmm. 
not I'm from Melfort. Ah, the problem with organizing New London. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, what you it's the same about. thing here. It's right? the same right. thing. It, it really, it really, well, I'm not, see, I'm not used to, I'm not, because I'm a Boston boy. Right. And they say, well, you're from, well, well I'm from Newton, exactly, but. You say, say I'm, I'm Boston. I'm, Boston. <laughs> I'm a Boston kid. You're from right. Chelsea. I'm a Boston kid. Uh, well, we in Connecticut yeah, couldn't tell the difference the way you speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you no, know, but not here. Right. You no. know, I'm from Groton. I'm from, right. I'm from New London. I'm from Quaker Hill. I'm from, you, you know. No anchor. Yeah, <laughs> right. no anchor. Yeah, yeah and, and that's where, where it is. And you go, well, okay. <laughs> you know, we, we were but, quoting yeah. statistics before. Uh, Broward County in Florida has more students than the entire state of Connecticut. One superintendent of schools, we have 166 superintendents. Uh, and, and this has actually been kind of the problem with the Common Core. It, it hasn't been so much the uh, features of the Core itself, but the implementation of how we address exactly. provide, uh, presenting curricula for the students, every school district seems to be doing something different. Something different, exactly right. Uh, and of course, if you've got a, you got a hundred and something superintendents, they're all going to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. As I know, I was married to one of them, so <laughs> no. I, you know. Well, you know, yeah, we, we, we did have public hearings on, yeah, on the yeah. Com Common Core, and invariably, every school district administrator that came up fully supported it and said, we're working on this, this is a weakness for us, so on and so forth. Uh, but we had feedback from teachers who said, my school district didn't give us the tools necessary. That you needed to do right. it, right, exactly. And, uh, I've, I've heard that. So, so we need to do a better job statewide. The, the Department of Education needs to do a better job of getting out to the school districts and getting things out to them so that they could use those tools for the students. Yeah. Right. We need to provide them with the resources so right. they can be successful. And, and one of the things I think, you know, we, you always say with kids, you don't want to teach them what to think, you want to teach them how to how think. How to think, exactly. And right. I think the common core with teachers, you don't want to tell them how to teach because they all bring a different passion, right. a different right. skill different to it, and that's what makes them great teachers. Right. Right. But we need to say, well, this is, they need to learn this. You can teach it however you want. So and, it's and the some opposite of the school districts, in some ways. We've heard from the teachers. Some of the school districts are telling teachers you have to teach it this way. Other school districts are saying mm -hmm. to the teachers, do what? This is what we want the kids to learn. You use your skills. You do it the best way you can. These are some of the tools that are so available. So how, how do how do we commu how, how, how do we communicate that fact? I mean, I know that up in Hartford we got this big think tank group of whatever they call them, experts that are up there under the school department that, are, mm -hmm. that sit up there, 100 and whatever they are, yeah, okay, that are, are, are they the people that are supposed to be getting this out to Well, I, I think the governor had, uh, had, had the right uh, method. It, he finally, he brought in the teachers and he brought in some parents and okay. said, listen, you look at this and where do we go with this? And, uh, you know, th there's no question that the experts have a, a, a real understanding, but they're not in the trenches. They're yeah. not there in front of the classroom uh, with the students. Uh, I can talk about it because I was but there. You were there. You right. were right. in the right. trenches, right. And, okay? And, and, uh, that, and, that right. Makes a, and that's what a lot of people do, makes a very, very big difference right. to be up right. there thinking about it, doing, but not being right. in the day-to-day -day situation. Well, it's one of the nice things, I mean, you talk about the governor, I mean, uh, shake up the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot. It's it's, oh, it's 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 sometimes. I mean, everybody, you know, it's 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 like they fe they focus on the coach. It's all the coach's fault. Right. But you know, there are a lot of assistant coaches that go underneath that, and you know, there's a lot that the players have to be involved in, and motivated. Uh, but you know, shake up the bureaucracy. I mean, that's one of the things that we had difficulty with um, with Department of Social Services. The uh, the other issue that arose was. Number the changes, the massive changes that were taking place in education, all at the same yeah, time. All at the same time. Uh, changes in evaluation, so right. testing procedures, exactly. the specific tests. Uh, too much, too, too, too much at once. And listen, I have confidence in our teachers. I think our teachers do a great job. Yes, there are some weak teachers, but the overwhelming number of teachers do a great job in the classroom. And uh, what we need to do is focus on how can we support those teachers, uh, help them, help the weaker ones to improve themselves, and if necessary, 
you have to get some, rid of some of those weaker teachers, but we're not talking about a large number here. Uh, what we need to be talking about is what the teachers could do to help the help students. Help the students. In, in, you know, in, in our particular part of the country, I totally agree with you. However, I've been into other parts yeah, of the right. country, right. which is it's the opposite. Okay, mm -hmm. I have somebody I argue with all the time about, he said, you always blame teachers. I said, no, I don't always blame teachers. There are teachers that need to be removed. I said, I, I'm a union person. I sometimes blame unions. Uh, 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 okay, I said, we happen to be in a part of the country where we are blessed with good teachers throughout mm -hmm. New England and stuff like that. I said, you don't realize there are other parts of the country where you would not want your kid going to the schools where they teach. And I'm sorry, that's just a fact. And that's why we have tests. I said, that's the other, he didn't like the test. I said, well, you know, I think that's why we, we should have tests and standards that they have to meet. Right. To common measuring standards. Common yeah. measure of yeah. Yeah. There, there needs to be something. Stop, stop it. come on. Right, right, but, you, know? but you, you, you can't make it everything. No, it, no. It, it, no, it, no, exactly. You know, right. the, I agree the outcome that, of a totally. student's education is not what can be identified by what's on a piece of paper it's, or in a computer. Right. And uh, I think that's one of the other big problems right. is that tests Tests are a tool, right? They're a tool to guide instruction. They should not be the goal of instruction. Uh, this past year, with, you know, when they're putting in the SBAC, it's a new test. So the teachers didn't even get any of the, the feedback because they're really, they're being the base here. They're using the data to help further develop the test. So at least what I've heard from some friends who are teachers is that it would have been nice to get back some of that data <laughs> so, okay. they so they can so the drive the drive and, 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 and know what's going on. And when you talk about weak teachers, the other yeah. thing, my friends who are teachers, they've said, look, it's like being a fireman. We don't want to work with a weak teacher. Right. You know, right. exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Right. You're we help, and, and it's, it's our team, yeah. right? You look at that's the team, and you need to coach them. You, 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 we, got a, we got a call coming in. Good evening. You're on Street Talk with Father Rust and his guests. Yes, good evening, Ross. I have a question for your guests. Okay. Uh, lately in the paper, there have been notices that many states are dropping out of Common Core. They find it not to be the answer to their problems. Could your intelligent guest please answer that question? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for calling. There you go. He put you uh, on the spot. Yeah, well, yeah. Which, which I, <clears throat> I, I the, you know, the. Um, there are, there are two realities. Number one, uh, there are concerns about some of the areas of the Common Core. Uh, one of the things that I have some concern about, uh, and uh, James and I were talking about it, is, is for younger children, uh, talking about developmental uh, capabilities of young children. And uh, are these uh, standards uh, developed uh, or uh, are, are they is such that maybe they're not proper developmentally for some of our younger kids. Uh, I, I can't say that without a, a, a study, but that, that, that's one possibility. The, the other thing is the politics of it. It's been uh, politicized. When, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot of criticism out there, and, and some of it's justified, but not a whole lot of it is justified. Uh, many states uh, are looking at the Common Core, and this is probably something Connecticut will be doing also, saying, okay, <clears throat> this area works for us, this area we need to modify. And I think every state should be looking at every standard that they have and know that it's developmentally appropriate for their students and it meets the goals that they have established for their students. So the Common Core is something, maybe a, a basic plan that each state should take and modify in such a way so that it works best for them. Well, I know one of the other things is, is resources. Resources, I mean, money, money that, you're, that right. you're, you're putting into these. Different states have different money that they can, you know, put right. into Right, and you're looking at completely new textbooks or yeah. whether you're going to tablets or whatever it is. And so you're right, it, it could be a monetary issue. And also just not providing the teachers with the resources they need uh, to implement the new curriculum. It's not a national it, curriculum. It, it, right. is, is it a question of what's in the curriculum? Uh, that, that certain that, states that are dropping right, out? The, I mean, uh, what, well, well, you're talking you know, about certain states. Uh, uh, you, you know. Let, let, I've heard one. I, 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 I mentioned Kentucky, right. but, but I thought they were doing 
Kentucky, it's gone well. Quite Indiana, well, right, right now, next right. Right. door. Florida is taking the Common Core, and now they have the Florida standards. Okay, right. Ninety-five percent of it is Common Core, but they've modified they've a modified. few. Modified. And so what we have is now the Florida standards, which everybody seems to be happy with. Because yeah. it's not called the Common Core, for one thing. Oh, right. And yeah. the Florida educators have <laughs> looked at it and said, this is what, uh, what we'd like to do. So uh, there, there should be modifications. But I, I, I think, in general, uh, it's gotten a bad rap, uh, to be honest. And and I, they're, right. they're standards. There should be flexibility right. for it the states. And right. some states have different industries. They need different abilities different. out of their graduates. And, and that has to be So do we say that this may right. lean? How the test may lean uh, too one-sided on certain uh, abilities. Is that a nice way of saying well, that? I, I, I mean, because if you're a math, uh, if you're a math science person, right. like my daughter, who I tested almost every year, okay, <laughs> and okay, if you lean towards, if you're somebody like her that has the kind of ability she had. She was off the, tra tr uh, off the track in science, math, any kind of calculative stuff and everything else, always way above. Now on her other side of things, say, uh, the, what's the word I want to use? Uh, uh, um, language arts. Language arts and English stuff writing. like that, English writing. She was average or sometimes below average. So, of course, what Daddy did was I brought in tutors, both ourselves and Mom, because we mm -hmm. were school, and I had her always tutored on the weak side. Mm -hmm. And I left the other side alone, because she'd excel. I mean, she's in top, you know, top percentage of the country in, in certain, certain things. Uh, otherwise, she wouldn't have got in the Coast Guard Academy just <laughs> to let people know that how difficult that is to get it. But that was the, that was the key. So I guess what I'm saying, if you, have a, if you have a core subject that is leaning towards one way, because we want scientists and research people and stuff like that, then the other individuals well, the I'm not going to do well on yeah. that. Okay. Common Core only addresses uh, the English and the math, oh, right? Science, science is not. There's oh, okay. something coming down the down the pike called Next Generation Science Standards, okay. which mm -hmm. will address what people they think should know at certain levels for for so science. Science, okay. Um, I don't think they would ever really do that with history because history is something that is very particular. Milford, mm -hmm. I think it's in fourth grade. Everyone has a Milford history lesson, and so history. I, I can't imagine there ever being a, a nationally. There are certain things, obviously, we want people to know and, and certain foundational yeah, documents that people should read. Civics, and I got, I but, you know, <laughs> you know the, I'm, I'm going to uh, go nuts on that. The, yeah. this, this is all part this, of the this, misinformation about okay. the Common Core. Okay. Uh, uh, it's designed to be a high minimum standard. Okay. Uh, and in other words, it's our expectation that all students will have the skills required to meet these standards. But it doesn't address uh, science. It doesn't address uh, even higher levels of math. I mean, if, if a student is a, a good student uh, and, and taking calculus, uh, the Common Core is, is not really so something that... So this is uh, not going to... Okay, right, right. Exactly. Okay. And we've actually had teachers in, in our public hearing that we had last year come back and say, well, the Common Core is too easy. Our standards have been higher than that. Well, well then there's then no, there's no there. problem. Yeah. There's no issue yeah. yeah. here. Stick with the old standards. standards. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Don't worry right. about it. Yeah. Exactly right. Well, see, that misinformation, I've got misinterpreted from right. stuff I, I've read, too, because right. it gave you the impression that this is where we are. And, of course, that is not the impression no. that I, I I've at, got right. from I'm, you. I was at a local Board of Education meeting uh, and somebody came in to complain about the Common Core, saying that uh, the textbooks that they're using in Common Core now are terrible, that uh, the, 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 there's a history textbook that I looked at that doesn't even include stuff about the Civil War in it. So that has nothing to do with Common Core. It has nothing to do with Common Core. But the blame was placed, placed on the Common on the Core. Common. Right? Okay. Well, I think you were bringing up uh, about um, younger children, or right. like uh, you know, preschool, like having certain uh, milestones that they're looking at the meeting. I think one one of the big issues, uh, certainly something that we look at, is um, 
you know, you have to have those interpersonal skills and those uh, really, it helps with their frontal lobe development for them to actually play and learn how to be involved with other people and you learn, you know, a lot of different skills along those lines that I think you're missing on if you're just focusing on, okay, we have to get these kids. I think that's what happens, you know, I want to say in other countries like, you know, that are sort of straight ahead mentality, like if you go to China, mm -hmm. you know, where they, they, they have these kids and, you know, yeah, they can turn into phenomenal geniuses, but they don't know how to talk to another person and they, they don't develop that part of their brain. And I think that's one of the great parts about this country is, you know, that's what brings that about is we do allow people to have, you know, that interaction and, and learn. I think less so since we've had the computer generation. <laughs> I know when I grew up with it, we were, we were involved, uh, but, you know, getting to your other end of, of, of where you are, you, you've uh, been highly awarded coach. You're, you, 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 you were a nominee for, for, for National Coach of the Year. How, is, how important is, is, is having that other side developed? Um, you know, it, it, two things. First of all, I coached swimming. I coached for almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great experience. Uh, from my point of view, I, I worked with students also, but it was in a different environment, so you have a different experience with the kids, mm -hmm. and they also have a different experience with, with this teamwork and so on. Uh, and, and that's very, very important in development of a student's personality. Uh, one of the um, things, and I hate to keep on going back to Common Core and being developmentally appropriate, mm -hmm. and, uh, certainly. Uh, Preschool areas and early education are so important in developing a personality. And at one of our hearings, the Commissioner of Education was asked a question by a, um, uh, a parent who came up and said, I've looked at this Common Core, and there's nothing in there about the normal developmental uh, activities that go on in a kindergarten classroom, you know, the play and things like that. He said, this is a terrible curriculum. And the Commissioner's answer said, well, the curriculum focuses just on the English skills and the math skills. There's nothing that says we shouldn't be doing all of those other things with sure. our kindergarten sure. students. So once again, those things are very important. And, and I, I also like the focus uh, that we've had over the last few years, the, uh, the governor uh, taking a huge step in leadership in uh, expanding preschool slots. Um, mm -hmm. we, we don't know for sure that the skills that are required uh, by the standards set up by the Common Core are, are, are necessarily going to be that important later on. But we do know that the exposure to early education is so important in developing the individual as sure. a whole person. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that they have respect for education, they understand what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 getting these kids into preschool and having them uh, learn the importance of learning mm -hmm could be more important than anything else. And so, you know, I, I, I think uh, that, that's something that really is immeasurable by any test, uh, but it's certainly probably something that we've all identified as being very important. I, I hope it comes back to our, to our lower income communities that, you know, with all the expansion of these slots helps with all of this. And that's what most of the studies show where it makes the biggest dis difference and the biggest impact on, on, on the Higher Education Committee and we heard Case make a presentation on workforce development. Dollar for dollar, the best thing that you can do for workforce development is invest in quality early childhood education. Um, you know, there's a lot of research at Heckman Equation, you know, talking about the importance of early childhood education. And not only does it increase your lifetime earnings, uh, decreases the chances of teenage pregnancies, decreases mm -hmm. the chances of going Don't to prison. <laughs> and yeah, so, um, yeah, there, I mean, you're talking about things that. I mean, sure, they've quantified them in the research, but for that individual, you've changed their life, yeah. right? And you can't, it's hard really to, to, to quantify that, and so it is very important. And they do have shown through his research that it really makes the highest impact in a lower, you know, a lower income community is making sure that they get access to, because they may not have had it otherwise. Where sometimes in the higher income or more affluent communities, the parents themselves had gone to preschool, they know the importance, and they're putting their children mm -hmm. In, in preschool. I mean, other interesting, you know, figures on, on the preschool, if a child starts kindergarten without preschool, 
they start 18 months That's behind. Right. Right. And many of them will never make up that difference. And when you're looking at learning disabilities, if you can make the early interventions, they could be curative, right? And, and you may have students who will never need, you know, the, the special it's education special services, right. which and is very expensive. Well, which is, birth, birth to three is a huge part of that. Can you believe that uh, we got five minutes left and we got two? Oh, wow. Uh, we, 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 Sorry, we talk got, too much. Uh, right. <laughs> you're running too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got yeah. two guys running for office rerunning, right, right. I should say, yes. right? Yeah, I've been, I've been uh, so I want to, I, I, I'm, James, I'm going to give you a, you, you know, give you a minute to talk to, because this is going to show in your area, yeah. talk yeah. to your constituency, please, and then, and then we'll turn it over to Paul, and, and then we'll finish up. I, I got a minute I need to finish up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so go, you go ahead. And, oh, uh, I was prepared you know, to answer questions. Great. So no, I wasn't no, necessarily no, uh, prepared uh, uh, to, talk to talk about, about that. Well, oh, okay. But I, it, you know, again, thanks for the opportunity. I also thank my constituents for the opportunity. It's been a tremendous honor uh, to be able to serve them, and it's been a privilege, and I worked hard really every day to justify the faith that they've put in me. Um, I think that as a state, you know, they, we, we have a ways to go, but we do have a lot of things to be proud of. Uh, national, asso national Assessment of Educational Progress, the NAEP scores, our 12th graders scored number one in the country in That's writing. Right. Yeah. We're tied for number one in, in math. Um, so we, we've been increasing the graduation rates from high school. Um, and, and, you know, locally, we've worked on a lot of things together as a delegation, you call us Team Milford, Team but Milford. we really do work with, it, it's been a great honor to work with Paul, but also an honor to work with Kim and Gail and fight on behalf of our constituents. Uh, thanks to Dominic for, you know, bringing this issue. And we talked before the importance of boots on the ground, mm -hmm. right, and getting the teacher. And they talk about that in Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Tipping Point. You know, the, the information you can gather from the boots on the ground, and you guys have been boots on the ground for us, and, you know, I just... You well, know, I want all the people down in your way to get out there and vote for you because I want to see you when I go up to the state house next year, Paul. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to uh, come right in at where James was uh, talking about. Uh, first of all, it's it's been a tremendous honor. I've I've been fortunate to serve five terms, and uh, uh, it's uh, the honor is amazing. What I believe uh, is most important, though, is that we're working for the people. Uh, very often when I talk to people, I say, well, I'm not all that interested in politics, but this affects your life. It's so important. It certainly does. Uh, I've had a great honor working with uh, James and uh, Kim and uh, Milford and Gail as our senator. I've also uh, worked in West Haven uh, with Representative Dargan and Representative Esposito. And, and in Orange, uh, we have a, a bipartisan uh, delegation there uh, working with uh, uh, representative Clarities, and uh, that's been a great experience. Uh, if I have one thing to say to uh, your listeners everywhere, our listeners everywhere, look at the candidates. Uh, for me, the legislature is about working with others to try and solve our problems together. Uh, if somebody's telling you they're going to do this, it's not going to happen. If somebody's saying, I intend to work with anyone who wants to work with me to get the problem solved, it's going to involve compromise, we may come out of there, maybe not happy all the time, but certainly we would have accomplished something. You so get that, uh, right? I, I, I hope that we can uh, look to everyone to pay attention to what's going on here and support the best candidates for office. Yeah, get out and vote. Go ahead, Dominic. Got you know, I can't th thank these guys like enough. I mean, really, um, they keep people informed. They let us know what's going up, and they're involved in our community. And, and like I said, I call them Team Milford for a reason. And it's really that togetherness that really pulls it. I'm glad you brought them up to see me. I'm glad, yep. I'm glad to <laughs> have both of you here. I, I have to talk to my constituency out there, though, about next week. you got to turn in because guess what? By popular <laughs> demand, he's going to be back. And next week, it's going to be... Diagnose the dummy. Diagnose the dummy. Mayor so, Fizio. so all of you folks turn in and we'll we'll talk about our illustrious mayor. And poor, you know, sorry about that, Justin, Darren, don't worry about it. Okay, I want to thank you and I really want to thank my guests. It's been a great show. And as always, you're always great people out there. Love you all. Please turn in, tune in to us next week. Say prayers for Father. Father will say prayers for you. And I know Mary can run this straight. God bless you all. <laughs>